Hello and welcome back to the Color Gemstone Academy. I am Paul DC, your instructor. You're watching Paul DC Gemstones. That's my YouTube channel. And today's lesson is called Phenomenal Gems. Now, what do I mean by phenomenal gems? Does it mean they're really, really, really neat or really cool? Well, kind of, yeah, but it's more than that. Let's go to the dictionary first and see what is a definition of the word phenomenal. Well, you can see it's an adjective and it says very remarkable or extraordinary. And the second definition is perceptible by the senses or immediate experiences, like seeing a ghost, something like that. Well, in the, in the gemstone definition, when we talk about gemstone phenomena, we're talking about a specific physical optical phenomenon that that gemstone has and not all gemstones will have them. It's really kind of a precious few. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the list. Sometimes I'm just going to show you pictures that I have of these phenomenal gems. Sometimes I'll hold one up for you to see it in real life. But we're going to start with one uh, that I think is pretty incredible. It's called Agilorescence. No, I'm not going to ask you how to spell it, but it is on the screen for you to see. Agilorescence, speaking of ghosts, is like that kind of blue milky glow that you see emanating from the, below the surface of a moonstone. Moonstone to me is a fascinating gemstone. I, I, every time I go to the Tucson Gem Show, I'm looking for ones that I like. Sometimes you can get them that are, they're quite affordable, but you don't really get much of that phenomenon that you wanna see. Uh, and other times you see a really great phenomenon and they become very, very expensive. But that is what agilorescence is. And that is something that is commonly found in a moonstone. Now, uh, this is one that we've talked about before, but it is another optical phenomenon called asterism. Now, asterism is that star effect that you see in a star ruby or you see in a star sapphire. But it's not just those that have asterism. Whenever you see that asterism or that star in a sapphire or a ruby, you will see six rays to that star. Now, why do they have six rays to the star? Because it is an, a, an um, hexagonal crystal structure. Now, you can also see something called a star garnet. Now, one of the big giveaways of a star garnet, that asterism, would be that garnet is a cubic structure, which means four sides to the crystal. So you would only see four rays to that star. And you can also see asterism sometimes even in quartz, and that would usually be a six rayed uh, star. And in a perfect world, if it's a, a well done star and you have the sun at high noon, directly overhead, it'll be a perfectly proportioned star in that sapphire or ruby. But that's a, that's, that's a, a case for another discussion about the, the quality of that particular phenomenon. Now, we'll move on to something called aventurescence. Now, this is something that is really, really interesting to me. And aventurescence is basically these small metal minute mineral platelets that are inside that gemstone crystal. And it's something that might commonly be seen in sunstone, where you see these little platelets of metal inside there that are sparkling, or it's something else that you can see in aventurine, which got its name because of that aventurescence that is in that stone. And you also might see something like that in um, Murano glass. And the reason I like to bring up Murano glass, I have I traveled to Italy a couple of times and it's, it's a fascinating place, obviously great wine. But when you look at um, that Murano glass, there was a time that happened many, many years ago. I don't know if it was the 1800s, early 1900s, where one of the glass blowers in Murano was working on some glass and accidentally spilled some copper filings into the glass mixture. And when they took it out and they saw those little sparkles inside the glass, they thought, this is amazing. And it happened by accident. And the name, uh, 
by accident, by chance, is a ventura, and that's in Italian. And so that's where the name aventurescence came from. It's by chance, and that happens in nature as well. Now we'll get to one that probably, and it's not, it's not a, a, a very expensive gemstone, but it is a phenomenal gemstone nonetheless. And I'm, gonna, I'm talking specifically about chatoyancy. Now chatoyancy is that cat's eye effect. Eye effect is something that you might see in tiger's eye. And actually, I'm gonna give you an unusual example of some tiger's eye. Because if you take a look at this, and you can see those, those little needle-like inclusions in there, instead of seeing that cat's eye, this was in actually, in this case, the setting instead of in the stone that you just put on top. Uh, so that would be tiger's eye, which is a, a form of quartz, or you might see that in uh, cat's eye crystal barrel, which is a little bit more almost like a laser-like eye that you will see on your screen right there. The good thing about the tiger's eye, you know, when you think of a lot of these, um, these phenomenal gemstones, they're usually pretty expensive and very expensive per, on a per carat basis. But Tiger's Eye is one of those fun, phenomenal gems that you don't have to spend a lot of money on and you can still enjoy a phenomenal gemstone. Now we get into one that is probably the, one of the most expensive gems uh, you will ever see on a, on a price per carat basis or otherwise, and it is called Alexandrite. Now the original Russian Alexandrite was discovered on the coming of age of Tsar Alexander's uh, coming of age birthday. And it was named after him and it was discovered in Russia, but it had the colors of green and red. Now the thing about the color change gemstone is it literally will change colors under different wavelengths of light. So in other words, if you look under a incandescent light bulb, it might be, and I forget which, whether, which is the green and which is the red, but it will show one color. And then when you get into maybe sunlight or uh, fluorescent lighting, it will show up as a completely different color. It's still the same gemstone, but it looks completely different. That's a color change stone. Now, we, the Alexandrite's the most famous of those examples, but you see some color change garnets these days, usually kind of a bluish color there. Uh, you can see uh, color change um, quartz at, at times, uh, color change sapphire. Um, so it's one of those things where when you expose it to different wavelengths of light, you will see a, a very visible change in the color of the gemstones. Now, I don't want you to, be, to confuse that with fluorescence. There are certain gems that will fluoresce, fluoresce under a, a fluorescent light like fluorite, and fluorite is famous for that. And sometimes people are selling things that they're calling color change fluorite. I think that's probably a little bit of a stretch to put it in the same league as an alexandrite. But nonetheless, that's another one that you might wanna uh, be familiar with. Now, another one I'm gonna give you a live example of is iridescence. Now, iridescence uh, is famous for pearls. You might see it also in mother of pearl, uh, abalone shell, and I know I show you one on your screen, but I wanted to show you one live. It's sort of what I call, and you can see it on both sides of this. It's almost like when the sun hits, but look, I'm covering my entire face <laughs> with the, the shell. But when the sun light hits, like if it rains, and there's an oil slick on the road and you see that kind of separation of that rainbow of colors, you can actually see that in, in an oil slick. Um, and sometimes even on a beach when it washes on shore, you'll see the different colors of that oil slick. Or soap bubbles, if you've ever played with the bubbles and you had those going around and you see the sun hit the bubbles and you can see that rainbow of colors, that's what's called iridescence. And sometimes in the case of pearls or even probably well, the abalone show that I showed you, they would call that orient because of the way that you orient to the light, you will see that kind of the rainbow of color effect that is called iridescence. So soap bubble, oils like pearls, mother of pearl, and bugs. Yeah, take a look at this bug and you will see that same uh, iridescence on the shell 
of that bug. Not saying that you might want to wear that as jewelry, but it's pretty nonetheless. Now we're going to get to one of my absolute favorites, because as I said, a lot of phenomenal gemstones are very rare. Usually when you get them, they're very small and they can be very, very expensive. But this one is called Labradorescence. And as the name implies, it's named after specifically the Labrite, Labradorite gemstone. Uh, what I love about it is you can find some quite large examples of this, but look at that phenomenon. Every time I talk about Labradorite, I'm really amazed at that phenomenon and how relatively affordable this gem can still be. It also uh, kind of when I talk about it, it's kind of like when we make fun or jokes about um, the, the folklore and legends about gemstones like amethyst prevents drunkenness. And I can assure you that is not true. I own a lot of amethyst and when I drink, I get drunk. Uh, so it doesn't prevent drunkenness. Um, but they thought there was magic power in gemstones. And I could see how if you saw a stone like this and you picked it up out of the earth and you held it to the sun and it started to glow like that, you might think it had some magical powers. And maybe it does. Who are we to say? Crystals have been here for billions of years. We've been here for a very short time. So that's Labradorite and Labradorescence is that play of color. It, it, it goes back to that very first lesson when I was talking about selective absorption. And that's true with this uh, Labradorite. It's true with when we were talking about uh, color change gems, you know, that selective absorption. The light goes in and it uh, shows you one color in one uh, vein of light or wavelength of light and another in a different wavelength of light. And now we will get to probably my favorite my favorite gemstone. My favorite gemstone is an opal. And I don't care if you're talking about a light image black opal uh, with that beautiful dark body color. You're talking about a white crystal opal. In fact, I'm going to show you first piece of jewelry I manufactured for myself. It was my opal cufflinks. And these opal cufflinks, I love them. Uh, it was pretty expensive to get a matching pair like that. Uh, but play of color is the shifting patterns of color that you see in that opal, whether it's an Ethiopian opal, an Australian opal, uh, doesn't matter. But basically, the, and I have a, a, a chart like this in my book, you look at what looks like almost tiny little ping pong balls. These are the microscopic little silica beads inside of an opal. And when the uh, light hits that, it reflects off in another direction and splits it into those rainbow of colors. And depending upon the angle that you view that opal or depending upon the angle that that light is striking and entering that opal you will get get a scattering effect of a rainbow of colors and that is called play of color and that is what made william shakespeare call the opal the queen of all gems because it had the color of every other gemstone in that one gem so this is, a, again, a shorter lesson, but it's about phenomenal gemstones. And I wanted you to understand, while I think all gems are beautiful, and I think they all have their own incredible uh, properties, but there's that small community of gemstones that are called phenomenal gems. And they are just that, they are phenomenal. By the way, if you're hearing that beeping in the background, our little beach town is getting our roads fixed right outside of our door. So. <laughs> I apologize if that was any distraction for you. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on phenomenal gemstones. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out. Uh, and you can also hit, click on that bell and you will get notifications every time another lesson is going to drop. Next week is also going to be a very important lesson and that's going to be on the care and cleaning methods and how you should store and clean your gemstones. So don't miss that one. I'll see you all next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye-bye, everybody.